guys, so the point I'm trying to get to here is I like my coffee really hot. And although I drink so much coffee that it doesn't really get a chance to get cold, I like it where it's steaming piping hot. So today, I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna make an electric heated coffee cup so that, that way I can put my coffee on there anytime I want it to get hotter. Anyways, let's get to it. So I'm gonna start by drilling a hole in the bottom of a coffee cup. This is gonna hold the heating element. I'm gonna to need to trim off some bits in order to fit the contacts. This was easy to do with a nice sharp carpenter's knife. So I'm gonna use this big washer for the contact. So I need to place that on there and mark it out so I know what to remove. I just have a drill bit in my Dremel and I'm gonna use that to remove the center. And this is gonna give me a little room in order to be able to put the other contact in and also to put the heating element on. So with that removed, I can give it a little bit of a clean up. And I can put the heating element in. This is a 12 volt heating element. You can find them for a few dollars on eBay. So in order to use this washer as a contact, I need to put some solder on it. I'm gonna use a blowtorch because it's such a big item and my solder gun just can't keep up with that. So with that solder being there, I need to make a little relief for it. So I just use a Dremel and finish notching that out. So now I'm soldering the other wire to another contact. In this case, I'm using a penny. Oh, hold on, before you go to the comment section about, you know, destruction of money and all this other stuff, okay, my understanding is you can destroy money as long as you don't put it back into circulation. So, basically, you can alter money, you can do a penny press, whatever, as long as you don't put it back into circulation. At the same time, I realized when I made this video that it wasn't really a good habit. So what I suggest doing is, instead of in this video where I use a penny, I would recommend taking and cutting out a piece of aluminum or aluminum, depending where you're from, and using that instead. So yeah, although in the video you see me using a penny, I have since then cleaned the penny off and instead I used a piece of pop can. And I would recommend using this instead, but instead of remaking the video, we're gonna go from here. So let's get back to it. And again, my solder gun couldn't keep up with it, so I had to use the torch. So I mixed up a little epoxy glue and I'm going to glue down the outside ring. This is quick set epoxy so it doesn't take too long to cure. Now originally I 3D printed the parts for this, however I only ended up using this ring right here. Um, the other one ended up getting hot and it melted so I created that out of wood which I'm going to show you guys instead because of the fact it's what actually worked. So like I said I ended up using the red ring as a spacer. So here I'm just applying a little bit of hot melt glue and I'm going to apply it to that. I'm mixing up a little epoxy and I'm going to put that on the wires just so they can't contact anything. And then I'm going to put a bunch in the center for the center contact to sit on. For this I'm using a 12 volt 6 amp power supply. This should be more than enough for what I need. So all I need to do is cut the end off strip down the wires. I'm going to put some solder on them ahead of time. This is called tinning it and it makes it a lot easier. So again, I use my torch to solder the wire to the washer and positive and negative really doesn't matter here. It can be either way. Originally, I was going to try to solder the spring to the penny. However, this didn't really work and it wasn't needed at the end. So for the base, I could have traced out the cup, but I thought it would be easier for video in order to trace it out with this ring. This is a piece of scrap, three quarter inch plywood. 
I'm gonna rough this out with the scroll saw, not getting close to the mark that I laid down, so I can fine tune it in a second. Since the belt of my sander didn't go all the way to the edge, I thought I could just place it on my table and use this piece of scrap as a guide. And I'm just going to take my time to sand it all the way up until that line. <gasps> now using my Dremel, I'm going to take and carve out a relief for the wires to fit in, so that that way they don't protrude where the contact is going to be. I didn't have a center finder, so I found that you can use a piece of paper by squaring it up. And if you see I'm marking for the camera how it's already folded here. And when I fold that over, lay a mark, I can then take and turn it about 90 degrees and do the same thing. And that's going to give me a mark for the center. Now I'm just going to drill a little bit in the center and that's going to be a guide for the center contact. And I also drilled it for the spring. So I needed a guide for the cup to go into and I decided to recycle this vinegar container. And after I cut both ends off, I squared it up on one side. Then I made a mark for the plywood as well as the thickness of the lip on the bottom of the cup I'm using. And with that I can cut a parallel line. So I wanted the lap to be back where the wire is, so I cut a notch out here for the wire to slip through, and then I glued it on. With the glued on one side I'm able to wrap it around and then trim it to length. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, cut a little relief for the wires. So now I pulled it back off and this way I can apply some CA glue all the way around it and then wrap my plastic around it. So now I've gotten the wires in there and I can take and apply some CA glue to where they overlap and finish securing this down. If you guys haven't used the CA glue that comes with an activator, I highly recommend it. It makes your job so easy. With that done, I applied some CA glue to hold the wires down, hold my contact down. I did not apply it to the center contact as it needs to be able to move with the spring. Now I got this piece of scrap board. And what I'm going to be using this for is mounting it to, and this is going to give it a little bit of weight so that way when I pick up on the cup, it doesn't try to come up with it, as well as a little relief for the cord coming out the back. I use a little bit of recycled hot melt to secure it down. And I drilled a hole on either side of the cord for my wire to hold it to. And what I'm using for a wire is a bread tie that I have burnt off a paper coating to. I really like using bread ties as a source of wire. It's like the perfect wire. I decided to add a little wax oil to this. And when I did, it really brought out the look of this wood and really made this project come together. And of course, I couldn't help but to advertise that I built this. And I decided to do the same on the cup as well. I guess partially because I have nobody to give these stickers to. So this is a little demonstration of a uh, time lapse of it heating up. Now normally my coffee would not get nearly that cold. So although it takes you know like 10 minutes to get from like 65 degrees to 120, in all reality I'm probably going to be trying to get it you know from 100 degrees to like 130 or 140. And if you look inside here, you can see that it's actually boiling around that element. And I know this water looks dirty, but I'm just testing it, making sure that it doesn't leak or anything. All right, guys. Well, you'll notice that this isn't actually the same uh, 
mug and that's because of the fact I'm actually going to be using that one and using it a lot. So this is going to be my stand it in place and uh, I hope you liked the video and uh, till next time.